Hey everybody, Channel's Car Driving Home. I'm Lamont and welcome to another one of my videos. So I had this idea that I wanted to clean the floors of the rig. So to do so, I decided to pull everything that would normally be stored under the bed, under the refrigerator freezer, and under the kitchen area out. And while I was at it, might as well pull everything out of the garage and get it out of the way so we could just get everything done in one clean shot. Jumping into my unfinished garage area, give you an idea, it's about six and a half feet wide and there's about four feet from the, the two back doors, the swinging back doors to this little pass-through opening here. And I normally keep my spare tire where this ring on the plywood is uh, visible. And I'm planning on putting some sort of storage maybe shelves or maybe some other kind of way of storing things above the spare tire on that wall and this is the area I normally keep my bike that purple foam is going to be covered up with plywood here soon yeah this is the dirt and lint and debris that has accumulated inside the rig over the last four months of me tracking through um, dirty parking lots and deserts and oh is yeah it, it really needs a lot of attention but we're about to about to get this cleaned up right now so why bother with a broom when you have access to a battery operated category 5 handheld hurricane aka my little leaf blower it may not be the best way to clean the inside of a rig out but it certainly worked I mean, I ended up getting quite a bit of dust on um, on everything else, but the floors are clean. So with the dirt blown out of the way, figured I would go ahead and give the floors a quick wipe down with some spick and span and an old t-shirt. I will say that living in a small space does have that advantage. It doesn't take long to clean it up. One of the things I noticed as I was wiping down the floor were the little superficial scratches left behind as I dragged my feet across some of the pebbles and rocks that I might have tracked into the rig. I usually keep some carpets on the floor and that certainly helped capture some of the dust that would have came in off my feet as well, but I consider the floor um, something that I knew I would have to replace every couple of years or so just depending on how long it would last. I've never dealt with vinyl flooring before, so I was kind of curious to see how it would wear over time. And um, other than the little scratches, so far so good. Now with the containers that normally sit underneath the refrigerator and freezer out of the way, I thought this would be a good opportunity to go ahead and tidy up the straps that I'm using to secure the refrigerator freezer to the platform that it sits on. I could have done this when I first put the straps in, but I was pressed for time and really figured I'd get back to it eventually. It's these little things that make a difference. There we go. All cleaned up and out of the way. Now, normally I set two containers directly underneath my refrigerator freezer. One has my pots and pans and the other one has my bed linens and maybe a couple extra pair of pants that wouldn't fit in the overhead bins. So for this next task, I have these plastic clamps that I'm going to use to hold some electrical cable against the wall underneath the fridge freezer. I think these clamps are actually designed for a plumbing application. Um, I have them in two sizes, both half inch and three quarter inch, and this happens to be half inch in my hands. And I'm, uh, I really like these clamps. Um, I'm using them with a Craig screw. I believe the screw is about an inch long, and even though it doesn't have the tapered seat that the clamp calls for, um, the Craig screws fit into the little space rather nicely, and. Um, I like the Craig screws as well because you don't have to pre-drill your wood. They're engineered so that they don't split the wood when you drill directly into them. Um, I use the square number two um, dr drill bit 
I guess you would call it, to um, secure those screws in as opposed to a Phillips head screw, uh, screwdriver or anything like that. So here you can see me, you know, sizing up where the clamp needs to be and go to go ahead and put the screw clamp in in a couple of places and get this wire um, cleaned up. So once again, I've got some loose wires that I want to secure to the wall. And these wires are much smaller than the electrical cable that I was securing underneath the fridge freezer. And so I'm going to use these, these clamps here. These are a lot smaller, a lot lighter, and they have this double-sided tape on the back that you could either stick it to a smooth, clean surface, or in my case... I'm going to push this screw down the center and I'm going to screw it to the to the surface in the garage area to secure the wires off the back of the the fan um, that I have mounted into the wall. So now with these clamps you have to use a zip tie um, with them. So there's the four slots that go around the perimeter of that little center square if I hold this just right, you could see where the zip tie would slide through. There you go. So you push the zip tie through that opening, and it'll come out the other side, and then you wrap it around your wires and secure it. Um, again, these are, these are better for a lightweight application, but you'll see after I get these wires on the fan um, secured in, inside of a split loom to protect the wires, um, I'll use those clamps to mount it against the wall. So, putting wire inside of split loom is not difficult. It's just tedious. And this is a thin gauge wire, so it's not that bad. But had it been a heavier gauge wire, I probably would have taken a screwdriver and put it into the split on the split loom. And as I drug the screwdriver through the split, it creates an opening and then it's a little easier to push the wire into it. So with our wires neatly tucked away inside of our split loom, we go ahead and grab a mounting tab and find a solid piece of wood to screw it into. Grab a zip tie push it through the little openings, wrap it around the wire, zip it up, and we're done. Mount up the second tab up here against the, the wall in the corner. Another zip tie. And we're done. Now this tab, I didn't screw it into the wall too tight because I wanted it to be able to, to angle and turn with the wire. And I'm just showing you um, that I take my cutters and trim off my zip ties. Kind of finish the job up. And we're done. I'm going to go ahead and load the rest of this stuff back up into the rig and I'm going to call this uh, the end of the video. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.